Hello again, and welcome to Unit 2. Unit 2 um, has some rather important themes in it. The overarching theme, uh, which uh, especially directs the vocabulary selected in Unit 2, as well as a little bit of the, the grammar topics, is the issue of one's daily routine, learning to talk about one's daily routine. Unit 1 was, of course, learning the 60 most, most common verbs and being able to talk about the environment that, that surrounds one in a, in a school setting. And Unit 2 now uh, is talking about what we do on a daily basis. And it gets into actually when, very specifically, we do such and such a thing. Uh, and so therefore you'll be learning about telling time as well as some verbs that deal with one's daily routine, like to wake up, to go to bed, to get dressed, uh, etc. Well, Unit 2 has another very important topic, a uh, very important skill that it's developing, and that's that, uh, the skill of reading. Up to this point, you've, you've been developing the ability to, to listen and understand, listen to and understand the language uh, spoken to you, and you've also been learning, of course, to speak the language, but now we're getting into elementary reading as well. So those are the, uh, the primary topics uh, focused on in Unit 2. And the first two lessons of this unit, which is what we're talking about today, deal with interrogatives. Interrogatives are words which allow us to uh, make our questions a little bit more refined. Up to this point, uh, you've learned how to uh, ask a question in two different fashions. And, uh, da -da -da. Uh, and and now you're going to be learning how to uh, make those questions a little more specific using the words who, how, what, where, why, when, how many, how much, and which um, uh, in Spanish, of course, and uh, exactly how it is you use them in forming a question. And so let's look at each one. Let's look. I'll, I'll try and remember the gestures that correspond and therefore the pictures and the ULAT that correspond to these words, these interrogatives, and um, uh, we'll talk about some Oh, uh, specific uh, issues that you have to remember with each of the different interrogatives, or certain of the interrogatives. So here we go. The first is, ¿Quién? ¿Quién? This is me pointing out different people in the crowd and trying to decide which one I'm, ta I, 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 I'm asking about. ¿Quién? 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 Por ejemplo, uh, ¿quién, uh, ¿Quién vive en esa casa? Who lives in that house over there? ¿O oh, quién? Uh, uh, ¿Con quién estás hablando? ¿Con quién hablas? With whom are you speaking? Okay. Now I use quién in two different ways in those two sentences. In the first sentence, ¿Quién vive en esa casa? Who lives in that house? ¿Quién in that sentence is the subject of the sentence. And you'll notice, by the way, I said vive. Vive because ¿Quién has the same value like it does in English as uh, a third person singular subject pronoun like he or she. Uh, we chop the end of the verb following quien when quien is the subject because we're talking about someone and we're talking about only one person. So, quien vive en esa casa? Uh, quien comprende? Quien comprende esta lección? Who understands this lesson? Quien comprende? No es to comprender and ch chopped, okay? So, quien? 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 You notice a couple other things about quien. Well, first of all, about all of them, uh, all of the different interrogatives, that is. You've learned up to this point that there are two ways to form a question, or you've learned two of the ways to form a question, using uh, the reversing of the subject and the verb, and uh, the second being verdad. Well, now, with interrogatives, you'll find that verdad makes no sense whatsoever. You can't use verdad uh, after a sentence that begins with who, how, what, where, why, when, how many, how much, or which. It would make no sense. For example, ¿Quién vive en esa casa? ¿Verdad? Who lives in that house? Right? Obviously, it's, it's senseless. So get that entirely out of your mind. Forget verdad. There's only one way to form a question with interrogative. That is <whistles> reversing the subject and the verb, except with quien. Because quien can serve as the subject of a sentence and fo be followed, therefore, directly by, by the verb uh, in the third person singular. Quien vive? Quien comprende? Quien prepara la comida? Who's going to prepare dinner? A quien prepara, okay? In that case, there's no reversal of a subject and a verb. You just quien and the verb. The second thing I want to tell you about quien is that there another form exists, and that's quienes. Quienes. Now, what does that suggest to you, quienes, as opposed to quien? Yeah, 
It sounds like more than one, and that's the case. If I'm asking a question where I anticipate only one person is going to be the answer to that question, uh, I would say quien. So, for example, uh, probably quien vive en esa casa is not a good example because more, usually more than one person lives in a house, right? So if I'm asking about a family or about what family lives in that house, I'd say quienes, quienes. And notice what I do now. Quienes viven en esa casa. Viven because I'm talking about more than one person. Just like when I'm saying ellos or ellas, quienes is talking about some unknown group of people. I have to put n mm at the end of the verb. Quienes viven en esa casa? But if I'm asking a question um, uh, about one individual, or where I'm expecting the answer is going to be about one individual, uh, uh, I would say, um, Quienes esa muchacha? Who's that girl? Well, obviously, I'm only talking about one person. I'm saying that girl. Quien, I don't say quienes, I say quien es esa muchacha. That, that's a lot, therefore, about quien, but also kind of sets the stage for the other interrogatives that follow. The next is que. For example, let me put something in my hand here which you won't recognize. I don't have anything here which people wouldn't recognize. Well, let's pretend you wouldn't recognize this weird device right here. All right. Que, que, excuse me. Que, que, que. What? What is this thing? Que. Uh, uh, que, therefore, corresponds to what? And it will be followed by a subject and verb that are reversed. For example, ¿Qué tienes en la bolsa? What do you have in your purse? Or ¿Qué, qué, uh, ¿qué quieres hacer? What do you want to do? Now, when I said tienes, when I said quieres, that was an example of the subject and verb reversed. Oh, yeah? Where's the subject? ¿Quieres or tienes is just a verb. Well, remember, if I want to say... For example, what do you want to do? I would say, ¿Qué quieres tú hacer? I say, tú quieres, you want. I reverse them to form the question, ¿Qué quieres tú hacer? But remember, the tú is really not necessary. I don't need it because quieres already tells me that I'm, I'm speaking to you. So I could say, ¿Qué quieres tú hacer? But the tú is really not necessary. In the same way, what was the other question I asked? ¿Qué uh, uh, oh, yeah. ¿Qué tienes en la bolsa? ¿Qué tienes tú en la bolsa? ¿Qué tienes, what do you got in your purse? ¿Qué tienes tú en la bolsa? I would say, uh, I could say, ¿Qué tienes tú? I can reverse the tú and the tienes. When I'm saying that you have, ah, tú tienes, uh, tienes tú, to form the question. But the tú isn't necessary. So, ¿Qué quieres hacer? is sufficient. All right, so with these, these interrogatives, except for quién, we're going to be reversing the subject and the verb. If the subject is tú, I'm going to just drop it. Okay? All right. Well, that was que. Uh, so we've got, up to this point, we've got, what was the first one again? Right, quien. What was the second one? Que. Que. Okay. And the third uh, is this one. It looks like buscar, doesn't it? But it's a question-forming word. Not buscar, but I'm asking a question. Yeah, it's donde. Donde. Donde está... ¿Dónde está mi, mi bolsillo? Mi, uh, no, mi cartera. ¿Dónde está mi cartera? Where's my, where's my wallet? <laughs> ¿Dónde está mi cartera? Now, uh, uh, notice I said, está mi cartera. Mi cartera está. My wallet is. And then I went <whistles> to form the question. So, ¿dónde? And then, está mi cartera. ¿Dónde está mi cartera? So, I have used inversion, right? I've reversed the subject and the verb. So, ¿dónde? Now, donde has another little point to it I should mention, another, uh, uh, another form, which is slightly different. Donde exists for where, like, uh, donde, uh, uh, donde, pones, uh, donde pones el papel, where do you put the paper? Or donde pongo el papel, where should I, where do I put the paper? Donde pongo yo el papel, donde pongo el papel. But in addition to donde, we also have a donde. A donde, which is written as one word, it says the letter A at the beginning of it, a donde is also where, but it has the idea of movement toward a, 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 a goal, not a goal in, in the sense of a, an objective, but a, a destination, that's a better word. A donde, for example, I want to say, where are you going? I don't say, donde vas, I say, a donde vas, because vas has the idea that you're moving toward a destination. So a has a sense of to, literally we would say, a donde vas is to where are you going? A donde vas, 
or if I, asked, I saw someone walking to school and didn't know where they were going, I, would, I wouldn't say, ¿Dónde, uh, ¿Dónde caminas? Uh, ¿Dónde caminas? I would say, ¿A dónde caminas? Because the act of walking is going to a destination. So in essence, I'm saying, to where are you walking? ¿A dónde vas? Okay, so ¿Dónde and a dónde convey this meaning. Use ¿A dónde when you're talking about movement toward a destination of some kind. So, so far, what do we have? Yeah, ¿Quién? ¿Quién? And then, ¿Qué? And then, uh, uh, what's this? ¿Dónde? Or ¿A dónde? Okay. Uh, así, esta. Um, I don't know if you ever saw Laurel and Hardy. Um, and I can't remember which ones. I think it's Stan Laurel used to do this when he was confused about something. He would say, it's a fine mess you've gotten us into this time, Ollie. Yeah, it must have been Stan who said that. In any case, this, <laughs> this is the gesture for, ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? So the person's utterly confused. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué vienes a la escuela? What do you come from? Why do you come to school? So, ¿Por qué? is why. Or, ¿Por, por qué aprendes español? Or, ¿Por, ¿Por qué aprenden ustedes español? Here with ustedes, since I'm saying it, you can actually hear the inversion, can't you? Ustedes aprenden. Aprenden ustedes. So, ¿por qué aprenden ustedes español? Why do you learn Spanish? So, ¿por qué? Is why, and it's followed by the inversion of the subject and the verb to form the question. Okay? So, up to this point, we've got, uh, yeah, ¿quién? ¿Qué? And then, uh, ¿dónde? Or, ¿a dónde? And then, <laughs> Look, look, look bemused or confused when you do this. Yeah, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué? Okay. <laughs> ah, sí. Uh, uh, esto. Now, this is a hard one to do. You know, it's really hard to do because it doesn't really make much sense anymore because people don't, you know, don't use wristwatches, do they? They use cell They look at their cell phone to see what time it is. But that's where the gesture originally came from. So, so I'll plant this, came from. So I'll plant this clock here on my wrist and I'll point at it. And that is, ¿cuándo? ¿Cuándo? Cuando, por ejemplo, uh, uh, cuando juegas basketball? When do you play basketball? Is it after school, during gym class, or the phys ed class? Is it before school? Cuando, cuando, and then I take tú juegas, <whistles> juegas tú, and then the tú, we don't need it. Cuando juegas basketball? Cuando, cuando, just imagine there's that clock there. Or, or if, you, if you've ever seen a wristwatch in your young lives, uh, you can pretend it's a wristwatch. Cuando, Juegas basketball or cuando salimos when we get out of here nosotros salimos cuando salimos o oh, señor Nesby cuando terminamos con este video when we finish I use nosotros terminamos invert them and so cuando terminamos nosotros este video esta clase cuando terminamos la clase señor Nesby and of course the nosotros just like tú isn't necessary because I said terminamos right so, ¿cuándo terminamos? Fíjate nosotros. ¿Cuándo terminamos la clase? ¿Cuándo terminamos con esta lección, señor Nesby? Eh, estoy harto de, de lo que estamos haciendo. All right. So, that's cuando. Now, cuando can also be used to ask for the specific time. So, in, in answering the question, I could, I could say, first of all, bueno, terminamos la... Uh, jugamos, uh, juego basketball. That's an easier example. Juego basketball después de, después de, is after, después de la escuela. Or, if I want to be very precise, I could say, juego basketball uh, a partir de, I mean starting at, a partir de las cuatro, starting at four o'clock uh, de la tarde, in the afternoon, okay? Uh, so, cuando, can't have the idea of when as far as the sequence of activities, what, what comes, it comes before or after something else. Or cuando can we give a response of a specific time, but more likely, when you want a specific time, the question will not be cuando, but there's an uh, there's an alternative method for asking the idea of when, which is at what time in Spanish or in English, and in Spanish it's a qué hora. So either cuando or a qué hora. Now, if you say a qué hora, then you have to get a response from the person that deals with the time of day. If you say cuando, it could be either the time of day, but more likely it's it's before something, after something else, at a, a certain moment. It wouldn't be a specific time. Okay, so cuando or a que hora. 
Entonces, ¿a qué hora llegas a la escuela? ¿Va en serio? ¿A qué hora uh, o comien comienzas la, con la escuela cada mañana? ¿A qué hora comienzas con la escuela cada mañana, each morning? Huh? You would say to me, well, go ahead and say it to me. Oh, you can't. Oh, <laughs> you can't because I haven't taught you how to tell time yet. That's coming up. Okay, if you, <laughs> excuse me. So you would say something along the lines of, Yo comienzo con las clases o con la escuela a, and you'd give a specific time, a las ocho. A las ocho. That comes up in lesson 2.16, more or less. We learn how to tell time, 2.15, something like that. Yo comienzo. Uh, la, las clases a las ocho. Or you could say, yo comienzo, if you don't know specific time, yo comienzo con las clases después de tada, llegar a la escuela. I start classes after I get to, get to school, I arrive at school. Okay? So that's cuando and uh, or a que hora, if you want, if you want a specific time in the answer to your question. So what have we got so far? Yeah. Yeah, we are Ken. Yeah, I forgot what it was. Ken, and then okay. I'm glad you guys give me the answers because often I kind of lose track at my age. I have to lose track of where I am. So you're, you guys are a big help. Thank you. What's this? Yeah, K. And then uh, donde or oh, donde. And then por qué. And then the one we just learned, which was. Sí, cuando or a qué hora, if you want a specific time. Who, how, what, what have I forgotten so far? Who, ah, how, se me olvidó, totalmente. Entonces, uh, um, this is another awkward looking one too, but you can't even see my other hand, let me get in the picture. This is again, it's a person who, uh, I don't know, a person who's completely bemused, befuddled again. And this is the idea of how in English. How? How? ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo vas a poder hacer tal y tal cosa? How are you going to do that? Okay. ¿Cómo vas a hacer? ¿Cómo? 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 Por ejemplo, ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo vas a la escuela? How do you go to school? ¿Caminas a la escuela? ¿Tomas el autobús? ¿Vas en carro a la escuela? ¿Cómo? 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 ¿Cómo vas a la escuela? Uh, o, por ejemplo, ¿cómo juegas? ¿Juegas básquetbol, verdad? Después de la escuela, ¿cómo? ¿Cómo juegas? Uh, ¿cómo? And again, I'm, I'm using inversion. You don't hear it. It's tú juegas, but I dropped the tú. Uh, so, ¿cómo juegas? ¿Cómo juegas? How do you play? ¿Bien o mal? O así, así, más o menos. ¿eh? Entonces, yo de mi parte, ahora antes yo jugaba bastante bien, ¿eh? pero ahora yo juego, yo juego básquetbol, yo juego mal, porque no puedo saltar, no puedo correr, es triste y todo. Bueno, pero ¿cómo? How? ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo? ¿Ok? Entonces, ¿cómo es another meaning too? Or it's used as two other meanings, actually. But uh, another one which is similar is if you want to ask somebody, what did you say? <laughs> That sounds like my story down in Alabama. What do you say, Mr. Nesbitt? Ow. Oh, okay. Um, como. Como is, 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 you know, it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's how, but it's also, uh, what did you say? Como? Como? Es decir que yo no comprendo lo que usted acaba de decir. I don't understand what you just said. Como? Como has the idea of what did you say? Okay, but in this context, we're talking about how. So up to this point, we've got, I won't make you repeat them. Quien? ¿Qué? ¿Por qué? ¿Dónde? Uh, 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 uh. ¿Cómo? And I've forgotten one. Así. ¿Cuándo o a qué hora? Okay? Now, there are three to go uh, of the ones, of the, the images, the gestures, and the words that you have been learning in, in lessons one and two. Uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Huh? You don't have to say it, but this is the gesture. Uh, 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 I'm counting. And in the picture, you see numbers, one, two, three. Uh, this is how many, obviously. How many in Spanish? It's cuánto, cuánto, or cuántos, or cuántas. Actually, cuan, for how many, that sense in English, it will only be cuántos or cuántas. Hear this, the plural ending? Now, cuántos or cuántas are the two forms it takes. Okay, because cuánto or cuánta is going to have the idea of how much without the s without the plural form, cuanto, so I'll, I'll start with, let's start with how, how much, cuanto, uh, cuan, uh, and that gesture is different, cuanto looks like this, 
a lot or a little? Looks like a fishing story here. Who's this big? No, it's really it's about Gua, uh, uh, mucho o poco? Cuánto? Cuánto? Uh, por ejemplo, cuánto dinero tienes? How much money you got? Cuánto dinero tienes? Oh, tengo mucho dinero. Oh, tengo poco dinero. Okay, cuánto? That's how much. Now, how many? Now we're asking for a specific number, and we're going to go to the plural forms. Cuántos and cuántas? Uno, dos, tres. Por ejemplo, cuántos dólares tienes? Este es un dólar. Este es un dólar. ¿Cuántos dólares tienes en la cartera? Bueno, yo tengo un dólar. No tengo más que un solo dólar. Entonces, eso es cuánto dinero tienes. That's how much money I got. Now, if I want to use the plural, how many dollars? I will say cuántos. ¿Cuántos dólares tienes? Oh, ¿qué más tengo aquí? Que sea plural. No tengo nada de plural aquí. Uh, um, ah, sí. Entonces no necesitamos objetos. Uh, ¿Cuántos hermanos tienes? How many brothers? How many siblings do you have? How many brothers and sisters? ¿Cuánto? And notice I say cuántos. ¿Cuántos? Because I'm using the plural after it. ¿Cuántos hermanos tienes tú? Tienes. ¿Cuántos hermanos tienes? Yo tengo dos hermanos, un hermano y una hermana. Remember, hermanos is siblings in the plural, and then it can also mean brothers. Huh? But hermano is a brother, hermana is a sister. So yo tengo dos hermanos, un hermano y una hermana. ¿Y ustedes cuántos hermanos tienen? And you'll say, right. Yo tengo, yo tengo tres hermanos, tengo dos hermanos, y, dos hermanos y una hermana, etc. Okay? So that's cuánto and cuántos. Cuánto, how much? Cuántos or cuántas, how many? So cuánto or cuánta, cuántos, cuántas. All right? Uh, y por fin, uh, este es cuál, cuál, este o este. ¿Cuál de estas dos posibilidades? ¿Cuál? And if you see the picture of this, this gesture, has, I think it has a number one here and a number two over here. It's when I'm, I'm having to make a choice between options. ¿Cuánto? Uh, I'm sorry. ¿Cuál? ¿Cuál? ¿Cuál means in English which? Entonces, uh, bueno, yo, yo tengo, um, tengo dos hermanos. You could ask me, ¿Cuál vive en, en Michigan? You know, which one of them? ¿Cuál de tus hermanos, o sus hermanos, señor Nesby, vive en Michigan? Okay, which of your siblings lives in Michigan? Bueno, ningún, por desgracia, ninguno de mis hermanos vive en Michigan. ¿eh? Mi hermana vive en otro, uno es un estado, mi hermano en otro estado, pero no vive en Michigan. Entonces, notice, now, ¿cuál can appear also in the plural? ¿Cuáles? If I'm, if I'm expecting response about one person, and I'm asking about which of your siblings, well, let's say, which of your siblings uh, um, is the oldest? ¿Cuál de tus hermanos es, es el mayor de la familia? Mayor is oldest, okay? ¿Cuál de tus de los hermanos, por supuesto? ¿Cuál de tus hermanos es el mayor? In that case, I'm asking for one person, so I use cuál to say which. However, if I, I'm expecting a response about more than one person, for example, let's say I'm, I'm on the, the, we're in the, uh, just out front of the school, there's a big crowd of students out front of the school, and I happen to know that you have several brothers and sisters in, in the, um, uh, in that crowd there. I could say to you, you know, which of these, which of those uh, uh, people are your, uh, are your, 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 your siblings, your, your brothers, brothers and sisters? I would say, ¿cuáles son Tus hermanos, cuáles, because I'm expecting response about more than one, and so I use cuáles, the plural for which. So that's a huge introduction, lengthy introduction to this topic. So far, here the inter, these are the interrogatives you've, you've learned in lessons one and two. Quién, and then uh, qué, and dónde, por qué, uh, este, cuándo, or a qué hora. Um, uh, I'm skipping one. Ah, sí. ¿Cómo? Or, uh, ¿cuánto? ¿Mucho o poco? ¿Cuánto o cuánta? And, ¿cuántos? ¿Cuántas? And por, and por fin, <laughs> and last of all, ¿cuál? Or, ¿cuáles? So let's get into actually trying to use these right now. We're going to look at lesson 2.2, the second of the two lessons on interrogatives, and, and we're in section 5. 
Here you see um, uh, some statements. I'll, I'll just tell you in English what, I, what the concept is. You've already performed these exercises, I believe, I hope. Uh, but in any case, I'll tell you what this should be in, in English. And let's see if you can form the statement. So this is, uh, who is the man? Who, you see, quien? I should have asked you what that gesture was. Quien? See, I, I give different options. Uh, Robert? Is it Juan? Is it Ali? Okay. Uh, who is the man? How would you say that? Here's the verb, is. Yeah, ¿Quién es el hombre? ¿Quién es el hombre? Who is this guy? ¿Quién es el hombre? ¿Quién es el hombre? Let's skip down to this uh, one down here, number four. Okay, we're talking about these multiple people, multiple women. How would you ask this question? Okay, you probably said, ¿Quién es las mujeres? And that would be wrong. Uh, uh, because, remember, I'm, I'm speaking about more than one woman. And therefore, uh, I'm expecting a plural response. And I won't use quien, I'll use in my question, quienes. And the verb, since the subject is, is plural, quienes, the verb is not going to be es, it's son. If you said quienes es, for example, quienes es las mujeres, that would be like an English saying, uh, um, uh, who is the women? There we go. <laughs> it's hard to come up with in English. Who is the women? Okay, you've got to use the plural form of the verb. ¿Quiénes son las mujeres? Okay, ¿Quiénes son las mujeres? Let's skip on down here to, uh, now we're going to change um, interrogatives. This is the one where I got trouble fitting my hands in the picture. It's, uh, ¿Cómo? 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 ¿Cómo es how? Okay, so the sense here is, uh, how, do you, how do you do the homework? Now, I can't do it at all. How do you do the homework? How would you say that? Now you're going to start using, notice with kin and kin this, you did not invert a subject and a verb, you did not reverse them. Now you will start doing that. Nice. ¿Cómo tú haces? ¿Haces tú la tarea? ¿Cómo haces tú la tarea? We all know that tú is not necessary. Sounds awkward to include it since it's not necessary. So, ¿cómo haces la tarea? How do you do the homework? ¿Cómo haces la tarea? O oh, esto. How do you prepare a pizza? Good question. Sí. ¿Cómo preparas una pizza? ¿Cómo preparas una pizza? Notice again, it wrapped the tú. ¿Cómo preparas? Make sure you get that sin there. That tells the person you're talking to them. Huh? ¿Cómo preparas una, preparas una pizza? Okay, now we're going to go skip to this uh, interrogative. What's this one? ¿Qué? Sí, ¿qué? 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 Entonces, hey. What do you want? That's what that question's asking. How would you say that? What do you want? You know that you want is tú. What's that? Yeah. Now do this. And then get rid of the tú. And what's your question? ¿Qué quieres? ¿Qué quieres? What do you want? Huh? ¿Qué quieres? How about this one? Uh, what do you have in your locker? A locker is a casillero. El casillero. Gracias, gatito. Por tu ayuda. Sí. <laughs> if you heard the piano in the background, that's my cat leaping out of the piano keys. ¿Qué tienes en el, qué tienes en el casillero? What do you got in, the, in your locker? ¿Qué tienes en el casillero? Tienes, of course, es tú tienes, uh, tú tienes, inverted, tienes tú, you heard of the tú. ¿Qué tienes en el casillero? Okay, let's move on now to, ¿dónde? ¿Dónde? Okay. I'm sorry, the question is, where do you live? Pretty valuable question. Sí, this is donde. Now, is it a donde vives? Is it donde vives? Which of the two? A donde or donde? It's donde. Huh? Because we're not talking about movement towards some destination. Uh, uh, just where do you live? I'm not saying where are you going. So, entonces, donde vives? Donde vives? Try this one. Where are you going? I just tipped it off. Donde, uh, where are you going? Remember, you go is tu... Vas, so, ¿a dónde vas? ¿A dónde vas? Muy bien, ¿a dónde vas? We use ¿a dónde? Because we're talking about movement towards some destination, whether it's church or school or the store or town or whatever it happens to be. Okay, después, let's move on to the next, uh, the next interrogative. And here we have, <laughs> ¿por qué? ¿por qué? So here you're asking, why, why are you leaving? Why are you leaving? The verb is irse, right? Let's see if you remember how to use that. Go ahead. Okay, we have to, to, say, to say you leave, tú 
te vas. Remember, it's ir se, so ta 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 and change it, tu te. Huh? Tu te vas, now, te, you have to tu, and so just te vas, start off with the interrogative, por qué? Por qué te vas? Por qué te vas? Why are you leaving? Por qué te vas? Try this right here. Why are, why are you sad? Is the verb estar, estar, entonces, Sí. ¿Por qué estás tú triste? But we don't need the tú, so ¿por qué estás triste? ¿Qué tienes? Uh, ¿Por qué estás triste? You hear me just say, ¿qué tienes? ¿Qué tienes? What does that sound like? What do you think that means? ¿Qué tienes? Yeah, what do you have? You, if I say, why are you sad? What do you have? What do you have doesn't sound like it follows immediately that, that question. Uh, ¿Por qué estás triste? ¿Qué tienes? In Spanish, que tienes really has the sense, can have the sense of, it means what do you have, literally, like what do you have in your pocket, but it also has a sense of uh, um, uh, what's wrong, what's wrong with you, or what's wrong, you know, what's the matter, que tienes, que tienes, what do you have, que tienes, okay, well that's good, we've, we've uh, got some practice with, oh, not, not quite all of them, we've got to about three or four more, excuse me, I'm jumping the gun here, so here we have, what is that one? Yeah, it's either cuando, or if I want the specific time, a que hora. Okay, let's assume here I want the specific time. So when do you get up? In other words, at what time do you get up? Okay, again, it's a reflexive verb, isn't it? It's levantar se. So you've got to remember, take that se off the end, da, 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 and make it fit the subject, which is tu, and the, so that the, the, the se turns into te. So, tú te levantas, we invert them, we don't want the tú, so just te levantas. Now, first put the interrogative before the te levantas, before the verb. You always start the question out with the interrogative first, who, how, what, where, why, when, first. So, ¿a qué hora te levantas? ¿A qué hora te levantas? What time do you get up? ¿A qué hora te levantas? Let's, let's try this one around here. Let's assume we don't want a specific time, we just want what part of the day, when, okay? This is estudiar. Sí, cuando. Cuando estudias. Cuando estudias. Bueno, estudio después de la cena. I study after dinner. Huh? I'm not giving a specific time. And the person wasn't expecting a specific time because they didn't say a qué hora. They said cuando. Cuando estudias. Okay, muy bien. Uh, ahorita. Here you see the, num the num numbering, the, the numbering going on, uh, the actual counting. Okay, so this is uno, dos, tres. This has the idea of how many, not how much. That would be like this, how a lot or little. This is how many in English and in Spanish. It's going to be the plural of cuanto or the feminine form cuanta. So cuantos or cuantas. Now let's see if it's cuantos or cuantas. Sandwiches. Do we say, are we going to say cuantos sandwiches or cuantas sandwiches? Which one do you think it is? Well, you got to go back and remember how you first learned it. When you first learned it, you learn, did you learn la sandwich or el sandwich? Yeah, it's el sandwich. It's el sandwich. And so it's a, we call that a masculine word. The plural of el is not las. The plural of el is los. All right? And so um, in the same way, cuanto, I'm going to say cuantos or cuantas. Yeah, cuantos. Cuantos sandwiches. Okay? Cuantos sandwiches. Here we tú quieres. Reverse the subject and the verb. ¿Cuántos sándwiches quieres? I could say quieres tú, but you don't need the tú. So, ¿cuántos sándwiches quieres? How many sandwiches you want? Huh? ¿Cuántos sándwiches quieres? You see how valuable, valuable interrogatives are. These are kind of the questions we ask all the time, aren't they? Before, you could just make a, a, a you, you could say, do you do this or don't you do this? But now we can be much more subtle with our questions. Uh, where, how, why, when, okay? And in this case, how many? Uh, let's try this one. How many, how many pens do you have? Go ahead and try that. Okay, a pen is a pluma. It's la pluma was the form in which you learned it. There are different ways to say pen, but that's one of the ways. La pluma. That being the case, is it going to be cuantos plumas? Is it going to be cuantas plumas? Yeah, you can actually hear it at the end of the noun, can't you? Hear as, as. Plumas. And so it's saying cuantos plumas. Those two don't gotta go together, do they? It's cuantas plumas. Cuantas plumas. What was this here? Remember here? Tienes. Hey, cuantas plumas tienes? Muy bien. Cuantas plumas tienes? Bueno, tengo tres plumas. Después, 
carros, eso basta. Let's go down here to how many and how much. In other words, we're going to have a singular subject after cuánto or cuánta. All right, that's me asking, relatively speaking, not a specific number, but a lot or a little. Okay, or it could also be asking, as you know, the word, um, the word. Uh, no, excuse me, that's a different, different question. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend I didn't say that. Let's move on here. All right, so how would you say, how much money do you have? Here, I got the two. Okay, so is it going to be cuánto dinero? Cuánta dinero? Well, you can hear by the ending of dinero probably what it's going to be, right? It's going to be cuánto dinero. Cuánto dinero. Cuánto dinero tienes? Muy bien. Cuánto dinero tienes? Uh, no, no, no es un asunto tuyo. It's not none of your business. Uh, después, ¿cómo se dice? Uh, how, how much homework do you do you do? How much homework do you do, like on a nightly basis? Diga, diga. Okay, we're going to use. We're not going to be counting a specific number. So it's not be cuantos and cuantas. It's going to be cuanto or cuanta. A lot or a little or just not, not, not too much, okay? So it's going to be cuanto tarea or cuanta tarea. Which is it? Cuanto or cuanta tarea? Yeah, you hear the A at the end of tarea. So it's probably going to be cuanta, right? Yeah, cuanta tarea. Cuanta tarea haces? Cuanta tarea haces? Ah, no mucho. No mucha, perdón. No mucha. Después. And last of all, we have the last of the interrogatives when I'm making a choice between two or more uh, uh, possibilities, options. And, uh, and this is in English, of course, uh, the word which. So here we're speaking the singular, which man, we only want to answer about one man, all right? So which man is the teacher? There's a group of people standing around outside the classroom. They're all adults. I want to say, which, which man's the teacher? Um, because I, I'm brand new here. So am I going to use cual or cuales? Cual hombre? Cuales hombres? Yeah. Cual hombre es el maestro, el profesor? And the, the next one, therefore, is going to be cuales hombres uh, uh, son mexicanos? Cuales hombres son mexicanos? Now, you may read some places, you may hear it said some places that cual cannot be followed immediately by a noun. And I just did it. I said, ¿cuál hombre? Cual, ¿Cuáles hombres? It's not true. It's not true. However, it is true that rarely will it be followed by a noun. More frequently, it will be followed by a verb, and very often the verb ser. Okay? So, if I could reword this in a way that maybe would be more palatable to more people, if I were to say, which man, I could say, which of the men is the teacher? In that case, I would say, ¿cuáles? Cuáles, in the plural, because I'm talking about men, a group of men. Cuáles de los hombres, of the men, which of the men. Cuáles de los hombres es, because I'm talking, uh, I'm sorry. I said cuáles, that was a mistake. Cuál. Cuál de los hombres, because I'm asking for only one man. Cuál de los hombres es el profesor. That would be, probably more people would, would, would opt for that solution. And I think in the ULAT, more, more fr frequently I use that, uh, that form there. It's not saying cual followed immediately by a noun, but I put the verb ser. Cual de los hombres es? Okay, o cual es, si, etc. Uh, 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 how about um, which of the, let's try this one down here. Which of the women is working in the store or works in the store? Okay, I want more than one woman now. I'm assuming that of this group of women, four of them, for example, I know work in the store. Now, now which ones work in the store? Give it a shot. You're going to say, which of the women work in the store? Okay. ¿Cuáles? Because I'm expecting a plural response. ¿Cuáles de las mujeres trabajan? Notice there's n, mm, because I said ¿cuáles? I'm, I'm expecting more than one. I'm referring to more than one woman. ¿Cuáles de las mujeres trabajan en la tienda? It can be said more straightforward. I'll go back this up. Just make sure you understand what can be said, but maybe it's a little less common. ¿Cuál hombre es el profesor? ¿Cuáles hombres son mexicanos? ¿Cuál mujer? There's only one of them. ¿Cuál mujer habla francés? ¿En cuáles mujeres trabajan en la tienda? Okay, so that's also possible. And then maybe what you hear, I, I, I definitely... Let's ¿Cuáles go mujeres trabajan en yeah. la tienda? ¿Cuáles mujeres trabajan en la tienda? Okay, but it could be said, and I'll back it up one more time, which man, or which of the men, ¿Cuál de los hombres 
es el profesor? ¿Cuál de los hombres, cuál es, no, I'm asking about more than one of them, ¿cuáles de los hombres son mexicanos? ¿Cuál de las mujeres es, because I'm asking about only one of them, es france, francesa? ¿Y cuáles de las mujeres trabajan en la tienda? So, cuál and cuál es a little more, it's a little bit more complex, okay? The, the idea for, for which, a little tougher to work with. Okay, well, we've, we've gone through uh, uh, the identity of the different uh, interrogatives. We've tried to form questions using them. Now, let's see if you spontaneously, without my help guiding you through, let's see if you can come up with valid questions referring to these, this uh, self-presentation, which I put at the end of unit, uh, unit one. I think it's in lesson 50, 1.50. Uh, by the way, my age changes every year. This is a lie right here. Yo tengo 67 años ahora. And you can tell how many years I've been working on the ULAT. It just keeps going on and on. All right. Entonces, here's a statement. I'll make a statement. This is like Jeopardy, if you've seen the TV show. I'll make a statement, which is the answer. You tell me what the question must have been that, that would get that answer. Okay? Yo vivo en los Estados Unidos. Now, by the way, don't use tú. Talking to me, asking a question of me, use usted. So here we go. Yo vivo en los Estados Unidos. ¿Cuál es la pregunta? Well, of course, you could have said, and hopefully you're done by now, you could have said, of course, uh, vive usted en los Estados Unidos? But we're not, we're using interrogatives. Who, how, what, where, why, when, how many, how much, and which? So make sure your question has one of those. Uh, I, I want to know, uh, um, uh, where do you live, in other words? How would you have said that? You would have said, hopefully, donde, and then you have usted and vive. You're going to invert those two words to form the question. Donde vive usted? Donde vive usted? And I'm going to take a, sh a, a brief parenthetical uh, a moment here where I'm going to explain to you something about usted again, which I think we've talked about before, but I want to make sure it's clear. When I say, f speaking familiarly, donde vives? You know that I can take tu vives and drop the tu. So why don't I drop the usted? Donde vive usted? Well, first of all, usted shows that I respect the person to whom I'm speaking. They're older than I am. They're someone I don't know personally. I'm not a close buddy with them. I'm showing them respect, and I use it. Now, that's the first question. Donde vive usted? If I ask another question after that, uh, 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 for example, do you live near here? I don't have to say the usted. I could just say, vive cerca de aquí? And that vive assumes because I just asked my last question of that person respectfully, that I'm still speaking to that person in a respectful way. I don't have to say the usted. In the ULAT, I invariably use the usted because I don't. I want you to be in the habit of demonstrating respect toward the person you're speaking. Now, in a real conversation, if you had a, a, a ten sentence or let's say a ten question, you were just interrogating this person you don't know well. A ten question uh, in, interrogation of this person. By the second or third, or the second or third question, you wouldn't say usted. But along about the fourth or fifth, you'd mention it again. You'd throw it in there again. It's a demonstration that, you know, I haven't forgotten that I, I mean, that I need to show respect toward you. To show that you're still demonstrating respect toward this person, you'll throw the usted in every fourth or fifth occasion, uh, time, as you ask the question. Um, however, in the ULAT, you'll just notice that I always use usted because I want to drill into you to use that that form and not to start off right away speaking to a person without saying usted. Okay, I hope you get that, that idea. Let's get back to the, the activity here. Um, let's see if we can figure this one out. Yo tengo 67 años. Es la verdad. Yo tengo 67 años. I think you already know the question, but let's see if you can figure it out. Yeah, when you say yo tengo 67 años, I, I'm saying I have, right? Yo tengo. I have 67 years. What, what kind of question would you ask to, to, to say, how, how old are you? Well, in English, that's how we say it. But in, in, because in Spanish, we don't say, I am 67. We say, I have 67 years. In the same way, your question is going to be, how many years do you have? And so, you're going to use this, cuanto or, cuantos or cuantas? Well, años, you hear años for years? Años, if it ends in os, probably cuanto is going to also end in os. So, cuantos años tiene usted? ¿Cuántos años tiene usted, señor Nesby? Es una pregunta indiscreta. It's a very indiscreet question. Let's move on here. All right, uh, number four. Yo estoy casado. No, 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 that's a hard Well, sure. 
You come up with some ridiculous question here. Uh, yo estoy casado. Yo estoy casado. <laughs> now, many of the questions you, you need a little bit more in, uh, uh, knowledge at this point to ask, like, uh, since when have you been married? Desde cuando está usted casado? But uh, here's, a, here's a question. How about, why are you married? <laughs> well, because I love my wife. And, but, but how would you ask that question? Yeah. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué está usted casado, señor Nesby? Okay. Are there other questions you could come up with that one? Probably not too many really valid, legitimate ones. Okay, this is a good one. Nosotros, referring to my wife and me, nosotros tenemos nueve hijos o niños. Nosotros tenemos nueve niños. Nine kids. Okay. You're probably going to ask in English, right? It would be, how many kids do you have? So how many? ¿Cuántos niños tiene usted, if you're talking just to me, or tienen ustedes, if you're talking to me and my wife? And my wife, she's up there. ¿Cuántos niños tienen ustedes? Okay, I'll try this. Uh, me gustan los animales. Now, what question could have gotten that answer? Me gustan los animales. Well, of course, the question, Señor Nesby, ¿a usted le gustan los animales? But that's not using an interrogative, okay? So let's try with an interrogative. How about, uh, 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 ¿qué le gustan? ¿O qué le gusta a usted? ¿Qué le gusta? <laughs> it's a pretty general question. What do you like? <laughs> well, I like animals. Uh, uh, but that is one conceivable question. ¿Qué le gusta, Señor Nesby? Oh, me gustan los animales y también el helado. <laughs> y el béisbol. Ok, después. Uh, uh, nosotros tenemos un perro y un gato. Ok, now that's a good question you can ask for, to get this answer. ¿Cuál es? ¿Cuál? I just used it. Ok, how about asking which animals, in other words, which kind of animals? Which animals do you have? Okay, now, if I want to say which, it's cual, right? Cual. But if you're expecting me to answer with more than one animal, uh, I'm going to use cuales. So, cuales animales tiene usted? Or if you're speaking to me and my wife, cuales animales tienen ustedes? Ah, nosotros tenemos un gato y un perro y también muchas gallinas. Okay, okay, está bien. Después, um, Yo lavo los trastes. Yo lavo los trastes. What's this? That's poder. Yo lavo los trastes. ¿Cuál es la pregunta? Sí. Yeah. Who washes the dishes? That would be quien lava los trastes. Remember, lavar, quien, talking about some unknown person, some undefined person thus far. That's the same as saying he or she. You're talking about them. There was only one, you're assuming. And so you're going to do this to the verb. ¿Quién lava? Lavar. Lava. ¿Quién lava los trastes? Okay, now if you think more than one person in the family washes the dishes, uh, that would be ¿Quiénes lavan los trastes, señor Nesby? Okay, let's try maybe one more here. Um, uh, sí, está bien. Yo no, yo no preparo la comida. Uh, okay. Yo no preparo la comida. No, yo no preparo la, com la cena. Yo no preparo la cena. What question would have been asked to get that answer? Using an interrogative. Right, so of course you could say, preparo usted la cena, but that's not, it's not specific enough. We want a more detailed answer in this question. So how about, uh, 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 oh no, excuse me, por qué will not work. Um, uh, Ah, you could say, ¿Quién prepara la cena? Say, yo no preparo la cena, mi esposa prepara la cena. Or you could say, <laughs> oh, okay, no, that wouldn't work either. I ask you, I stumped myself. You could ask me, ¿Cuándo prepara usted la cena? When do you prepare dinner? And I would say, yo no preparo la cena, mi esposa prepara la, mi esposa prepara la cena. I suppose that was a lousy example. Okay, okay, let's go right to the test now, which is found at the end of one of the different forms of the test. I found it toward the end of lesson 2.2, .2, 
the multiple choice test. What we're going to do is I'm going to talk with you about each one individually. After you respond, A, B, C, or D, uh, we're going to talk about why the answers are as they are. Necesito mis lentes. Entonces, uh, let me see which test this is, what form I want to use. It is the la third of the, of the, uh, the third of the listening comprehension tests. And here we are. So I'm going to say for I'll just say for you what this statement is. Now this is a little different kind of a listening or multiple choice test. In the past, you've had to form the statement and choose which is the right which is the right answer that I give you. However, here this is an answer to a question. Yo quiero vivir in Francia. Yo quiero vivir in Francia. And you're going to hear four questions, and you have to choose which of these four is the correct question and in the correct form to receive this answer. All right. All right, and we'll talk with each one individually before moving on to the next one. So um, you, you'll have a, a few seconds to respond, then I'll give you the correct answer. So here we go. Entonces, yo quiero vivir en Francia. Now, which of these four uh, options is the right question? ¿Por qué aprendes francés? ¿Aprendes cuándo francés? ¿Cómo aprendes francés? Aprendes como francés. I'm going to go back and say those again, since this is the first one here. <clears throat> A. ¿Por qué aprendes francés? B. ¿Aprendes cuándo francés? C. ¿Cómo aprendes francés? D. ¿Aprendes como francés? You choose A, B, C, or D. Okay, well, the correct answer is... A. Ah, was A. The other ones, uh, only one other one makes sense as a question. Uh, letters B and D were, complete, were completely incorrectly formed. Uh, the, the interrogative, who, how, where, why, what, 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 <laughs> who, how, what, where, why, when, how many, how much, and which, has to go in the initial position in the, set, in the question. It goes first, okay? And in, in letters uh, B and D, it came in the middle of the question, which would really kind of make, it's a wrong, wrong position, and also made no sense. Um, now, uh, uh, C was possible. ¿Cómo aprendes francés? How do you learn French? ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo aprendes francés? That makes sense, but that's not the right answer for it. Hey, ¿cómo aprendes francés? You'd expect me to say, oh, well, I use the EULA to learn French. Um, but this statement is, I, I, I learn French, or I'm sorry, um, the answer was, I want to live in France. And so the question should be, why are you learning French? And that's what letter A said. ¿Por qué aprendes francés? Okay, número dos. Vamos a seguir. This answer is, yo vendo periódicos. Vendo periódicos. Now, which of these four questions would receive that answer, or could receive that answer? Um, A. ¿Por qué vendes? B. ¿A qué hora vendes? C. ¿Qué vendes? D. ¿Quién vende? I'll say them again. A. ¿Por qué vendes? B. ¿A qué hora vendes? C. ¿Qué vendes? D. ¿Quién vende? Okay, the, the answer was, uh, I, uh, I sell newspapers. That's what I do in life. And so A said, ¿Por qué vendes? Why do you sell? Well, I sell newspapers. Why do you sell? Well, I, I sell newspapers. That's not an answer to the question. Uh, B. ¿A qué hora vendes? So what time do you, at what time do you sell? I sell newspapers. That's not a good answer to the question. That's not a good question to get that answer. <laughs> Whichever way how to look at it. D. ¿Quién vende? Who sells? That's who sells. Well, I suppose you could say that. Who sells? I sell newspapers. But I don't think that's the best answer. C is clearly the best. It says, <coughs> ¿Qué vendes? What do you sell? I sell newspapers. That's clearly the best answer. D is weak, I would say. Okay, número tres. <clears throat> Yo quiero cinco dólares is the answer. What's the question? A. ¿Qué quieres dinero? B. ¿Cuáles dólares quieres? C. ¿Cuánto dinero quieres? D. ¿Cuánto dinero quieres? Again. A. ¿Qué quieres dinero? B. ¿Cuáles dólares quieres? C. ¿Cuánto dinero quieres? D. ¿Cuánto dinero quieres? You picked the right answer. 
Okay, ah makes no sense. It's, ¿qué quieres dinero? What do you want? Money. <laughs> makes no sense. ¿Cuáles dólares quieres? That sounds good except for the first word, ¿cuáles? This is not how much money do you want, which would be a good question to ask. It's which money do you want? I want five dollars. Which, which money? No, which money doesn't make any sense. And so, ¿cuánto dinero? When money do you want? No. And last of all, how much money? ¿Cuánto dinero quieres? D is the answer. Número cuatro. La mujer comprende alemán. Alemán is German, okay? La mujer comprende alemán. A. ¿Cómo comprende alemán? B. ¿Dónde comprende alemán? C. ¿Quién comprende alemán? D. ¿Cuánto comprende alemán? Again. A. ¿Cómo comprende alemán? B. ¿Dónde comprende alemán? C. ¿Quién comprende alemán? D. ¿Cuánto comprende alemán? C is, C is the correct answer. ¿Quién comprende? ¿Quién, quién, quién, quién? ¿Quién comprende alemán? Who understands German? La mujer comprende alemán. That's the answer to that question. Okay? Uh, uh, 4A, by the way, said, ¿Cómo comprende alemán? How does she uh, uh, understand German? Well, that's a good question to follow up. The, 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 there's the next question. Uh, how is it that she understands German? But it's not the one that would get this answer. It's one that would follow this answer. Okay, this place. Número cinco. Uh, okay, this answer here is, uh, Yo camino a la escuela. Well, some of us tell you where they're going. What's, I just used the word, didn't I? What is the interrogative you expect to hear in the question that preceded it? Okay, A. ¿Cómo vas a la escuela? B. ¿Qué vas a la escuela? C. ¿Con quién vas a la escuela? D. ¿A qué hora vas a la escuela? One more time. A. ¿Cómo vas a la escuela? B. ¿Qué vas a la escuela? C. ¿Con quién vas a la escuela? D. ¿A qué hora vas a la escuela? A, B, C, O, D. Well, C and D were legitimate questions, but they don't get this, an this answer. Uh, C said, uh, uh, ¿Con quién vas a la escuela? With whom do you go to school? Like, who do you walk? With whom do you walk? Uh, D. Uh, ¿A qué hora vas? At what time do you go? But the answer is, I, I walk to school. That's not an answer to the question, at what time, is it? So uh, 5A is correct, which is, ¿Cómo va? ¿Cómo? How? How do you go to school? Do you take the bus? Do you go in, the, in your parents' car? Do you walk? In this case, I walk to school. So A was the answer. Número 6. Um, yo hago la tarea después de la cena. Hago la tarea después de la cena. I'm not going to translate it for you. Let me see if you can figure it out. Hago la tarea después, uh, después de la cena. Um, ¿Por qué haces la tarea? B. ¿Cuánto haces la tarea? C. ¿Dónde haces la tarea? D. ¿Cuándo haces la tarea? Again, A. ¿Por qué haces la tarea? B. ¿Cuánto haces la tarea? C. ¿Dónde haces la tarea? D. ¿Cuándo haces la tarea? Okay. Uh, A. Said, you know, why do you do homework anyway? Maybe a lot of you think it's a pretty good question, but it's not going to get the answer of a, a, I do homework after dinner. Okay. Um, obviously, it's going to be asking, the question is going to be, when do you do your homework? And that is letter D. ¿Cuándo haces la tarea? Okay. Número siete. Yo voy a la iglesia. Yo voy a la iglesia. Okay. Uh, telling where I go. So, what do you think is going to be the interrogative used when a person tells you where they go? A. Uh, ¿Cuándo vas a la iglesia? B. ¿A dónde vas? C. ¿A dónde vas a la iglesia? D. ¿Qué vas? A. ¿Cuándo vas a la iglesia? B. ¿A dónde vas? C. ¿A dónde vas a la iglesia? D. ¿Qué vas? Well, that makes no sense. What do you go? <laughs> but... Uh, uh, this is not quite right either. Because, ¿A dónde vas a la iglesia? Where are you, to where do you go to church? The question itself doesn't make sense. To where do you go to church? Uh, B was, um, uh, ¿A dónde vas? And that's the correct answer. ¿A dónde vas? Where do you go? Now, notice I said, ¿A dónde? In the, in the, que in the, uh, the question, uh, because we're saying, to where do you go? There's mo movement toward a destination. ¿A dónde vas? Where do you go? Oh, I go to church. Or where are you going? You got the idea in English. Uh, número ocho. 
Um, yo veo cuatro gatos. Veo cuatro gatos. When the person's telling you a number, what are you probably asking them? What is the question would have preceded when they're telling you a, a, a quantity? Okay, Think, bear that in mind. Ah, cuando gato, gatos ves? B, cuantos gatos ves? C, cuantos gatos ves? D, cuantas gatos ves? That's a tough one. All of them sound close to the right answer, only one is correct. Listen to those again. Ah, cuando gatos ves? B, cuantos gatos ves? C, cuantos gatos ves? D, cuantas gatos ves? Well, by process of elimination, let's go backwards. Cuantas gatos, those don't fit together. Cuantos gatos, how many cats? Cuantos gatos, ves is do you see? Ves, tu ves, uh, ves tu? Uh, cuantos gatos ves? Cuantos gatos be fine, but not cuantas gatos. So that's not possible. Si said cuantos, well, cuando, cuando does not have a plural form. Cuando is this idea right here. And, and when in the plural, I don't know what that would be. But when when do you see the cats? Or when cats do you see? Uh, uh, B. Uh, cuantos gatos? I'm sorry, that was that was uh, letter C, which was incorrect. B is the correct answer. Cuantos gatos ves? How many cats do you see? Cuantos gatos ves? Notice that cuantos gatos. Those fit together. Cuantos is in their proper form to go with a plural masculine subject. Okay, numero, numero nueve. Uh, ella se queda en el, la muchacha se queda en el apartamento. La muchacha, I'm identifying him or her, excuse me. When you identify a person, what's that probably going to suggest? Okay, uh, uh, numero nueve, momentito. Numero nueve, aquí está. Okay, A. ¿Cuántos se queda en el apartamento? B. ¿Cómo se queda en el apartamento? C. ¿Quién se queda en el apartamento? D. ¿Quiénes se queda en el apartamento? A. ¿Cuántos se queda en el apartamento? B. ¿Cómo se queda en el apartamento? C. ¿Quién se queda en el apartamento? ¿Quiénes, en el, uh, de, ¿Quiénes se queda en el apartamento? Well, I just indicated at the beginning, when you're identifying people, probably the question is going to be who, right? So, ¿Quién is going to be the form you're going to use? But the C and D sound very similar. ¿Quién se queda en el apartamento? ¿Quiénes se queda en el apartamento? There's a problem with D. Can you hear what it is? ¿Quiénes se queda en el apartamento? ¿Quiénes is the plural. I'm expecting a plural answer. Okay, it doesn't look like the person has more than one person in mind, but uh, in, in the answer, but ne nevertheless, there's another problem, a grammatical problem. Quienes se queda, quien, quedarse, you know, da, 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 da. quienes se queda wouldn't fit together because quienes is going to require se quedan because it's a plural subject. It's who in the plural? Quienes se quedan en el apartamento? The answer is C. Número 10. Yo pongo el libro. And this is the word for uh, on, or if you're in Alabama, on. Uh, ¿Quiénes se queda en el apartamento? Uh, sobre... I'm on the last question again. I'm sorry. Yo pongo el libro sobre la cama. I put the, the book on the table, on the bed, excuse me. Yo pongo el libro sobre la, 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 la cama. Now, if the person is, is indicating to you where they put the bed, what's probably the question going to be used? What interrogative is probably going to be used in the question? Okay, ah. Uh, ¿Dónde pones el libro? B. ¿A dónde pones el libro? C. ¿Cuándo pones el libro? D. ¿Cómo pones el libro? Okay, again. A. ¿Dónde pones el libro? B. ¿A dónde pones el libro? C. Uh, uh, ¿Cuándo pones el libro? D. ¿Cómo pones el libro? O well, ¿Cómo pones el libro? Is how do you put the book? The answer is not on the bed. Okay, that's not going to fit to, the, to that question. And then C said, uh, ¿Cuándo pones el libro? When do you put the book? Uh, which makes no sense, but but uh, but on the bed is not an answer to when. And so it's either A or B. A says, ¿Dónde? And B says, ¿A dónde? Which of the two is it? ¿Dónde pones el libro? Where do you put the book? Or ¿A dónde pones el libro? To where do you put the book? Obviously, it's going to be the first of the two. Pon, uh, ¿Dónde pones el libro? Because you're not talking about your movement towards some destination. You're just talking about a location uh, where the book is set, is placed. Número 11. Uh, número 11, sí. Yo tengo, yo tomo 
El carro. Yo tomo el carro. Maybe that's the answer. That, well, I won't tell you what the, it's an answer to. You got to figure it out. A. ¿Quién va al supermercado? B. ¿Quiénes van al supermercado? C. ¿Por qué vas al supermercado? D. ¿Cómo vas al supermercado? Again. A. ¿Quién va al supermercado? B. ¿Quiénes van al supermercado? C. ¿Por qué vas al supermercado? D. ¿Cómo vas al supermercado? The person is indicating here the means of transportation, right? I take the car, a car. I don't walk. I don't fly. I, I don't crawl. Okay, I take my, the car. And, and so when someone tells you the way in which, the means, what's probably going to be the interrogative used, whether it's in English or in Spanish, it's going to be ¿Cómo? How do you go, right? And that answer is D. Uh, ¿Cómo vas al supermercado? Okay. And last one, número 12. Yo estoy cansado. Yo estoy cansado. I'm worn out. I'm tuckered. And so, A. ¿Cómo quieres, dorm uh, ¿cómo quieres dormir? B. ¿Por qué quieres dormir? C. ¿Dónde quieres dormir? D. ¿Cuándo quieres dormir? Otra vez, A. ¿Cómo quieres dormir? Hey, how do you want to sleep? Oh, I guess I want to sleep pretty well. What kind of a question is that? ¿Cómo quieres dormir? B. ¿Por qué quieres dormir? C. ¿Dónde quieres dormir? D. ¿Cuándo quieres dormir? ¿Cuándo es asking? Ah, oh, okay. ¿Cuál es la respuesta? You choose. A, B, C, D. Okay, you've cho chosen. ¿Cuándo es asking? When do you want to sleep? And I am tired. When do you want? When do you want to sleep? I'm tired. They don't fit together. That, that question with that answer. C. ¿Dónde quieres dormir? Where do you want to sleep? I'm tired. <laughs> That's not an answer to that question. B. ¿Por qué quieres dormir? ¿Por qué? Why do you want to sleep? ¿Por qué estoy cansado, señor Nesby? Eso basta con esta lección. Quiero dormir. I'm worn out. This lesson has gone on a long time. Uh, and so, yo estoy cansado. The answer is, ¿Por qué quieres dormir? Why do you want to sleep? Because this lesson is finished. Hope you did well on the, on the test. Next uh, time we get together, uh, the answer, by the way, was B, in case you didn't understand that from the last one, is B. The next time we get together, um, we're getting into an interesting topic, an important topic, and that's the skill of reading. And you're going to be reading about, uh, we're going to be talking about, and you'll be reading about, prior to uh, the next class, um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, a, a fictional family, a fictional American family living in France. Now, if this fictional family, called the Richardsons, by the way, happens to bear any resemblance uh, to the Nesbitt family. Remember, we have nine kids, not just two, and so or three, excuse me, in that family. And therefore, I'm sure it's only a, a coincidental resemblance to the Nesbitts in any case. Um, but you'll be reading about the Richardson family in the next few lessons, and um, uh, we will talk about the skill of reading, especially about phonics, but the sounds that met letters create, uh, combinations of letters create in Spanish. And especially, I'm going to focus on pronunciation. Okay? Let me give you a little foretaste here. Uh, um, uh, yo no quiero que ustedes hablen español de esta manera porque es muy fácil componer una frase con una gramática correcta pero hablar con un, un acento atroz y eso no es lo que deseo de, uh, para ustedes lo que quisiera para ustedes es que ustedes tengan o tengan un acento más o menos auténtico now mine's not Mine's not authentic people by all we can tell them I'm, I'm an American but the first half of what I said was was said with a strictly American accent using the American phonics system, the English American, American English phonics system. And that's what I want to help you in the next, next lesson. Start to, next, uh, yeah, next time we get together, start to learn how to correct and um, eradicate from your speech. You want to sound authentic. I lived in France for many years, and to me it was really important to try and be as, uh, be as, as little ridiculous as I possibly could. I wanted to sound as French as I possibly could, and so so people would be making fun of me all the time. All right? And that will be important to you if you ever get a chance to live in a Spanish-speaking culture or interact with Hispanic people here in your own country. Okay, creo que eso basta. Nosotros nos veremos en la próxima lección. Ciao.